Hello and welcome to the Bright Gaming Group 2023 fourth quarter and full year earnings conference call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. And if you would like to ask a question, simply press star one. I will now turn the conference over to Yaniv Spielberg, Chief Strategy Officer. Please go ahead. Thank you, operator. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our fourth quarter in fiscal year 2023 earnings conference call. I'm Yanni Spielberg, Chief Strategy Officer for Broad Gaming Group. I'll be hosting today's call alongside my colleague, Matt, our CEO, to comment on our fourth quarter in fiscal year 23, and Ronan Kanor, our CFO, will review and discuss our fourth quarter and fiscal year 23 results. If you have not already done so, you can follow our earnings call presentation from our website at investors. That's with an S, investors.brag.group, in the section called Latest Presentation. On this call, we'll review Bragg's financial and operating results for the fourth quarter and fiscal year 2023. Following our prepared remarks, we'll open the conference call to a question and answer period. I'll start the call with some brief cautionary remarks regarding certain statements that may be made on this call. Certain statements made on this conference call and our responses to various questions may constitute forward-looking information or future-oriented financial information within the meaning of applicable securities law. Statements about expected growth, prospective results, strategic outlook, and financial and operational ex expectations, opportunities, and projections rely on a number of assumptions concerning future events, including market and economic conditions, business prospects or opportunities, future plans and strategies, technological developments, and anticipated events, trends, and regulatory changes that may affect the corporation and its subsidiaries and their respective customers and industries. While we believe these assumptions to be reasonable, they are subject to a number of risks, uncertainties, and other factors, many of which are outside the company's control and which could cause the actual results, performance, or achievement of the company to be materially different. There can be no assurances that these assumptions or estimates are accurate or that any of these expectations will prove accurate. For a complete discussion of these factors, please refer to our recently filed press release and other publicly available disclosures. With that behind us, I'd like to turn the call to our CEO, Matt. Matt? Good morning, everyone. My name is Matteo Schmazi. I'm chairman and CEO of RAG. I'm going to run through a company overview and key operational highlights from the full year of 2023, as well as from the fourth quarter. Then I'll pass the line over to Ronen Kanor, our CFO, who will go through the financials. Following that, I'm going to talk more about some of the strategic and operational points that I want to focus on before wrapping up with our outlook and summary, and then we'll open up the call up to your questions. The first slide shows a snapshot of who Bragg is. We are a multi-award winning global supplier of casino games, technology, and services to the fast-growing iGaming industry. As Ronan will show you in the financials, 2023 was another year of growth. But more than that, Bragg has gone through a transformational year. Last summer, we restructured the board of directors, and in August, I rejoined the company as CEO. And since then, we have been busy implementing a series of strategic and organizational changes all with the aim of aligning shareholders' expectations with company operations and unlocking shareholder value. I'm going to talk more about strategy later in this presentation, but first let's turn to slide five to take a look at some key operational highlights from the full year of 2023 and from the fourth quarter. During the year, we signed global tier one agreements with Betson 888 William Hill and focus stars, and we continue to expand our content distribution network by entering new markets, including Belgium, Italy, and Mexico, in each case, launching with the local market leaders. We also continued our content rollout in multiple North American iGaming markets, including with several operators in New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. Our exclusive content portfolio continues to resonate well, and we have seen a particularly positive trend with this content in North America from the fourth quarter onwards. Meanwhile, we also continue to build our content business in the international iGaming markets, such as the United Kingdom, Spain, and Switzerland. 
In the fourth quarter, we were pleased to launch with Superbet in Brazil with our proprietary content, as well as with casino aggregation and our Fuse player engagement platform. During the quarter, we expanded the distribution reach of our newest games and technology in New Jersey with our latest launch with BetMGM. And we were pleased to announce in the fourth quarter that we successfully negotiated our time extension agreement with BetCity in the Netherlands, including continued content and product delivery. After Ronan has taken you through the financial results, I will come back to talk more about our strategic progress in recent months. Ronan? Thank you, Matt, and good morning, everyone. I'll begin my comments on slide seven. As Matt indicated earlier, the full year of 2023 marked another positive step in our expansion journey. We continue to execute against our mission and strategic plan, as was reflected in our financial and operational results. In the fourth quarter, total revenue went down by 1.4% year over year to 23.4 million euros, reflecting revised commercial terms with one of our key strategic partners agreed during the quarter. Full year total revenue was up by 10.4%, reaching 93.5 million euros, continuing our growth momentum since the financial year 2021. The growth was mainly derived organically through our existing customer base, launching financial year 2021 and 2022, in particular the PAM and 10 key solution customers in the Netherlands, together with content offering and a solid revenue performance from the Wall Street Gaming Studio customers. From an operational KPI perspective, total wagering generated by games and content offered by the group during the quarter was up by 18.1% to 6.1 billion versus 5.1 billion euros in the same period last year. On a full year basis, total wages were up by 26.6% to 22.4 billion versus 17.7 billion in the previous year. As you can see from the wagering chart on the right hand side, Rack saw ongoing positive momentum from the fourth quarter of 2021, which demonstrated the engagement of our customer and users to the content we are delivering from our proprietary, exclusive, and from aggregated third-party studios. Gross profit for the quarter decreased by 7.3% to 12 million euros, with gross profit margin decreased to 51.5%. The full year 2023 gross profit increased by 10.8% to 49.9 million euros, with margin raising to 53.4%. The full year 2023 gross profit improvement is primarily the result of increased revenue performance in all content products while recording slightly lower PAM and managed services revenue. Adjusted EBITDA for the quarter was down 23.7% to 2.8 million euros, with adjusted EBITDA margin reaching 11.9%, while the full year 2023 adjusted EBITDA saw growth of 26.3% to 15.2 million euros, with improved margin to 16.3%. The yearly change in adjusted EBITDA margin is mainly as a result of scale in revenue while maintaining controlled investment in salaries and subcontractors and other operational costs as part of the company's strategy to expand software development, product, and senior management function. As of 31st of December 2023, cash balance ended at 8.8 million euros with a positive net working capital position. BRAC provided an update on its expectations for 2024 full-year revenue and adjusted EBITDA growth with revenue expected to rise 9.1% to 16.6% to a range of 102 to 109 million euros, and adjusted EBITDA expected to increase up to 21.7% to a range of 15.2 to 18.5 million euros. The midpoints of the 2024 revenue and adjusted EBITDA guidance ranges represent growth of 12.8% and 10.9% respectively over the reported full year of 2023 revenue and adjusted EBITDA. We continue to execute against our mission and strategic plan. We are scaling up our business in line with both our revenue growth and continued movement in product mix, as indicated in the right-hand side of the slide. Full year gross profit increased by 10.8% to 49.9 million euros, with margin raising by 20 base points to 53.4%. The fourth quarter seen a decline both in gross profit to 7.3% to 12 million euros and margin drop to 51.5%. 
due to revived commercial terms with a key strategic partner that have been reflected in the quarter and is mainly related to managed services and aggregation products. In the fourth quarter, total gains and content revenue segment amounted to 18.2 million euros and represented 77.8% of the total revenue, which is comparing to fourth quarter last year where the content revenue segment amounted to 18 million euros and represented 76%. Proprietary content deployment is positively progressing both in the U.S. and EU market by increasing both distribution and games performance constantly. As indicated in the previous quarter, Bragg is expecting an improvement in gross profit margins to take place in financial year 2025 by increasing its higher margin revenues coming from proprietary content, PAM, and Turkey solutions. Moving to slide 9, full year adjusted EBITDA amounted to 15.2 million euros against an operating loss of 0.8 million. The gap was driven by the following non cash and exception items depreciation and amortization. The increase in intangible amortization is part of the Steam Games acquisition in June 2022, increased level of investment in software development, and a change in the useful life of customer relationships. Shebes payment, the charge for awards granted during the period composed of DSUs and RSUs and options. During the period, a one-off charge of 0.4 million euros relating to this continued contracted relationship of employee was incurred. Exceptional cost is mainly associated with the discontinued contractor relationship of employees in the total value of 1.3 million, and again of remeasurement of the third consideration, mainly associated with acquisition of spin games in June 2022, on the total outstanding deferred liability that was adjusted to reflect the changes in current fair value. Moving to slide 10, as you all see on the slide, we ended the fourth quarter with a cash balance of 8.8 million euros, compared to 11.3 million euros as of December 31st, 2022, with an outstanding liability of 4 million US dollars of convertible security. Post quarter end, the company made cash repayment of half a million US dollars and 1 million US dollars settled through issuance of common shares, leaving an outstanding balance as of today at 2.5 million US dollars. We expect to continue exercising the right to pay down the existing convertible security subject to ongoing management assessment. Net working capital at the end of December 2023 ended at 5.1 million euros, which is excluding deferred consideration on convertible debt, which compared to the 6.6 .6 million euros at the beginning of the year. From a cash flow perspective, the full year financial year ended December 2023, a total of 11.7 million euros generated from operating activities with underlying performance reaching to 13.6 million euros offset by the movement in working capital and income taxes of 1.9 million euros. A total of 9.7 million euros invested in intangible assets, many related to the capitalization of software development costs, to a total value of 8.7 million euros, and 0 0.6 million euros to the other intangible assets during the period. And at a total of 4.2 million euros used in finance activity, which is predominantly related to the repayment of loans in relation to the convertible security, to a total of 3.7 million euros. Looking forward, Management is projecting positive free cash flow from operations, while there is no capex or technology debt required in the business. With that, I will hand over the call back to Matt to continue with commentary on strategy and operation. Thank you, Ronan. In the fourth quarter and full year of 2023, we have accelerated content development and the release of proprietary and exclusive content, achieving a critical mass of gains. We have introduced branded and custom product categories, and we have successfully established or built on existing relationships with third-party exclusive content providers, such as Gallimart, Blueberry, and Incredible Technologies. And we're seeing growth in the distribution of all of our content in regional markets throughout the US, Canada, LATAM, and Europe. We have also started monetizing new opportunities with Fuse for iGaming, Fuse for sports betting and Fuse for lotteries, introducing new features and new functionalities to the platform, such as an AI-powered recommendation engine and highly customizable jackpots tailored to operators' brands and user base, driving incremental revenue for both the operator and brand. We expect to generate meaningful recurring revenue alongside our aggregation 
exclusive content, spam, and managed services. We have successfully developed a commercial plan to grow revenue outside of the Netherlands and will continue to diversify away from potential overexposure to the Dutch market through growing revenue in other high-value markets such as Brazil, Belgium, and Canada. The uncertainty with BetCity that was hanging over BRAC has been resolved, and we've signed an extension of the BetCity PAM agreement and also agreed a new framework agreement for distribution of our proprietary and exclusive content in a number of local regulated markets for various and paying brands. Following the changes last summer at the board level, we initially focused on organization, structure, and processes, and have started executing against new organizational blueprints. We have successfully resolved critical vacancies in the HR, legal, and US and EU commercial departments, and will continue to add expertise and talent to build the best teams in the business in order to execute against our strategy. We have also implemented refined strategies for the US and Canada, while we initially only focused on proprietary and exclusive third-party content, and now we're also focused on aggregation and use platforms in both US and Canada, and we're seeing especially strong interest in views in both of these markets. I will talk about further strategic initiatives later in this presentation. Moving to slide 13, I want to reiterate the key pillars that we have put in place to continue to drive revenue growth, improve our profit margins, and generate value for our shareholders. We are focused on our proprietary and exclusive games roadmap. We have successfully scaled up production, launching 69 new exclusive titles in 2023, both from our own in-house studios and from in-demand suppliers such as Blueberry, Incredible Technologies, Sega Sami Creation, Government, and others. With our ever-expanding games portfolio, we are building brand recognition in North America, Europe, and LATAM, and we're leveraging our game production capacity to offer increasing numbers of operator-exclusive, custom, and bespoke games. Most recently, we launched Boardwalk Slot Bankers and Cash, our second custom title for Caesars Palace in Michigan and New Jersey. Furthermore, we are focusing on regulated market distribution growth, with Tier 1 and Tier 2 operators remaining a key strategic pillar for us, allowing us to leverage our content portfolio by expanding its reach to more players worldwide. And in turn, we can offer scale in multiple regulated markets for these operators. We still see plenty of upside in large regulated markets such as US, UK, Italy, and others, where we have plenty of space to launch with new operators and to grow our share of wallet with existing ones. And we're very well prepared for markets that are currently going through regulatory reforms in Latin America, such as Brazil, Peru, and Mexico, and in Europe, where we see potential for growth in country spending regulations or are expected to further regulate, such as Finland, France, and Germany. Our promotional engagement and player journey platform, Fuse, offers a differentiated product proposition and remains central to our strategy for growth both on content, content delivery, and fan fronts. We believe that Fuse is a platform that is unique in the market as it works on a standalone basis or as a part of proprietary content and third-party exclusive content portfolio, aggregated content and sports betting portfolio, and PAM. Fuse is easy to use, allowing operators to launch multiple real-time cross-product and cross-channel engagement campaigns that are designed to significantly increase the most important KPIs, such as lifetime value, conversion rates, and retention rates. 
we feel that we are in a perfect position to leverage the capabilities of this platform to allow operators to create differentiated B2C products. We have already rolled out fuse with selected key PAM and aggregation customers, and we aim to license fuse as a standalone product in the US, Canada, LATAM, and Europe. In addition to that, we are in a very good position to cross-sell and upsell all of Bragg's products, such as aggregation, PAM, and managed services. On the back of this opportunity, as well as increased interest in our combination of aggregation and fuse tool set for sportsbooks, we're creating new partnerships with sports betting platforms to create compelling new turnkey propositions. We're also going to continue to refine our products and explore new segments such as iLottery and social moving forward. Lastly, our focus on recurring profitability expansion means that we aim to deliver a culture of continuous improvement and we're going to leverage opportunities to introduce product development automation and introduce product features that will allow our customers to further automate processes and become more efficient. We are implementing strict cost control measures and will seek to expand profit pools and profit margins, all with an aim of maximizing shareholder value. On this slide, I want to highlight that our broad offering of content, technology and services enables us to deliver custom solutions for our customers in different types of regulated iGaming market environments internationally. Our full turnkey solution powered by the Bragg PAM and Bragg Hub, the content aggregation and delivery platform, leads the market in the Netherlands where we showed that by being fast to adapt and certify our technology in newly regulated markets, we can gain first mover advantage and become the go-to local market expert. Our PAM business is also making strides in the Czech Republic and we are ready to offer our customers highly customized PAM and Turkey solutions in regulated and newly regulated markets where the right opportunities arise. At the core of our technology offering is Bragg Hub, content aggregation and delivery platform with over 9,000 online casino games from all the top suppliers available to a single integration. Our aggregated portfolio is constantly updated with new games providers and the latest games with no extra work for our customers. And it all comes with our cutting edge fuse engagement tools as a standard. The combination of a huge library of regularly updated games along with player engagement and experience enhancing features is a powerful proposition in the US and Canada and especially in newly regulated markets like Brazil, where we recently launched our aggregation offering with Superbet, while in Peru, where we recently became an approved supplier, our localized options are in high demand. We also see strong demand from businesses such as state-run lotteries looking to upgrade their interactive offering with the latest in iGaming content, and promotional engagement and player experience features for their iLottery, casino, and sportsbook verticals. Lastly, and I'll talk more about this on the next slide, we are proud that in the last couple of years, we have ramped up our exclusive content offering, games built on our proprietary RGS. In 2021, we kicked off our proprietary content journey with the acquisition of Wall Street Gaming, which provided an instant springboard in growing our creative portfolio mixed with investing in technology and development teams to build a modern and flexible game development team. We began to roll out internal content in 2022 under the Atomic Slot Lab brand based in Las Vegas and at the same time grew our European design team to kick off Indigo Magic launches. These investments began to produce a significant number of games in 2023 with 29 games released. More importantly, we have seen many of these internal titles perform well 
across various new markets where we are actively adding customers, including in the UK, Italy, Mexico, and greater Latin America. We continue to grow and refine our content and commercial teams and processes, leading to an exciting portfolio in 2024, entering several new product categories. Also, very important, is the studio partnerships we have with a variety of companies which we also expanded or introduced in 2023. Launching titles from Blueberry, such as Devil's Lock, has proven impactful in both European and North American markets. We expanded our partnership and increased the amount of releases from both Incredible Technologies and Wim Pass, along with introducing our first titles with King Show Games and Sega Family Creation in Europe, both of which are being actively rolled out or in submission for the American market. Gamomat, with its European heritage, has proven valuable as we grew out relationships in markets such as Switzerland last year. The U.S. iGaming landscape is incredibly exciting and constantly evolving. We have a strong focus on the region, and North America continues to be a key growth market for us. We have faced a few challenges as multiple operators have changed their PAM platforms, leading to delays with certain key customers and markets. But we continue to work through integrations, opening up our distribution further with several new planned launches over the coming months. Our North American strategy continues to be well received by operators as Bragg offers a unique value proposition in the market with content that is recognized by players from a variety of partners, from incredible technologies to Blueberry to Sega Sammy Creation to King Show Games, and our internal studios which produce some recognizable land-based titles and resonate well with players and operators in the U.S. as well as Canada. The chart on the right-hand side of this page highlights the momentum we are starting to see in North American markets with the Bragg RGS. Rollout of new games from internal studios as well as from our partners are contributing to our growth here. And as we continue to launch games, we are building a baseline revenue stream which continues to incrementally grow over the long term. Our growth potential remains significant. We are live with our newest games with one operator in Pennsylvania, but several integrations are in process in late stages of testing. This is a very important market as we can see the results from our historical spin RDS content. We have multiple customers in New Jersey with go live dates later this year and filling out the Michigan market operators ensuring we can go live with both standard online games as well as mobile iOS apps. We expect that Delaware will be online for us later this year. We also expect 2024 will bring meaningful growth in the Canadian market. There are multiple key operators who still roll out our games within Ontario, but equally exciting are the other Canada online partnerships in progress. We expect to be live in two additional Canadian provinces this year, and this will lay the foundation for an effort to seize as many opportunities in the Canadian market possible and significantly expand our footprint. We remain bullish in our near-term growth opportunities in North America, and while no new markets are expected to open near-term, our upside in the existing markets is substantial, particularly as we look at expanding our content portfolio. RAG expanded its content portfolio significantly in 2023, but in 2024, we will build on that momentum in multiple ways through key product strategies and capabilities. Understanding the data and building the right content for the right market and for the right segment is a critical part of this, and our strategy of having localized and custom content in North America is proving its value. 2023 marks our first custom game with Jesus, with an additional rollout already this year. But we have multiple operators in Europe where customization is providing unique opportunities to boost performance and strengthen our relationships 
and gain position. 2024 will also see our first brand extension opportunities from our internal content teams. We will build multiple brand extensions to Dragon Power, a very popular game in the United States market along with Congo Cash due to launch later this year. These brand extensions highlight the fact we have games that resonate with the players and offer a great opportunity to build on that performance and player loyalty. In fact, we are also expanding our product breadth with our brands as we will be launching into new segments with our brands including Dragon Power Kino and Egyptian Magic Kino. Further, we are combining our capabilities as we look to launch a customer branded table game later this year. 2024 will also see a new partnership in Europe where we will deploy our slot content with a live bonus feature Superwheel in partnership with StakeLogic. Innovation is in our DNA and we launch connect and collect games across multiple platforms. This innovative game mechanic has shown great initial results and we'll continue to launch games with this type of game mechanic. Combined with innovations within the hold and respin segments such as Cosmic Cash, Electric Jungle, and Golden Treasures, plays well in the market as incremental innovation. Finally, 2024 marks a greater push between our internal studios and our Fuse Player Engagement tool set to collaborate as we are launching our first collaborative products in Q2. This can bring it all together as bespoke promotions customized for our operators across our content it is expected to drive our continued content performance and extend its lifespan. As I'm sure you will all be aware, we have seen an increase in M&A activity across the iGaming and sports betting space, with some of the recent deals indicated on the right-hand side of the slide. Against this backdrop, and following recent increased interest in BRAG, the board confirms that a special committee chaired by independent board director Don Robertson has now been formed to consider and explore strategic alternatives for the company. These strategic opportunities may include a sale of the company or of its assets, a merger, financing, or further acquisition of tech and content assets, or any other strategic initiatives but there can be no assurances that any transaction will be completed. So to summarize, we are pleased to report another year of growth with full year revenue rising 10.4% to 93.5 million euros and adjusted EBITDA rising by 26.3% to 15.2 million euros. Gross profit increased 10.8% year over year to 49.9 million euros. And as you have seen, we have made good progress on organization and strategy, and we have the strategic pillars in place to drive growth with our diverse product portfolio, which is in demand in multiple different regulated iGaming markets globally. We are issuing full year revenue guidance in a range of 102 to 109 million euros which would reflect 9.1% to 16.6% revenue growth, with full-year adjusted EBITDA guidance set at a range of 15.2 to 18.5 million euros, representing up to 21.7% growth at the top end of the range. Lastly, following increased M&A activity in the market as well as increased interest in BRAG, a special committee has been formed, chaired by Don Robertson, to explore strategic alternatives for BRAG. Thank you all very much for attending this presentation of our fourth quarter and full year results. Now, if you have questions, Ronan and I would be pleased to take them. Thank you. If you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you have queued up and want to withdraw your question, simply press star 1 again. Your first question comes from the line of Neil Gilmer with Haywood Securities. Your line is open. Yeah, thanks very much. Good morning. I'm on for uh, Jean-Luc uh, this morning, um, so thanks for taking my questions. Um, first one is maybe sort of a two-part um, 
question here. Just wanted to better understand if you can provide some more color on with the revision of the Bet City Agreement, sort of how that impacted um, the economics both in, in the quarter as well as your outlook for 2024 and the guidance you provided. And then the second part is sort of exiting 2024. I think you've previously talked about, um, you know, trying to target that 60% gross margin to 25% EBITDA margin. Is that um, still achievable with that uh, reworked agreement? Uh, thank you. So um, we have reworked the best agreement and uh, obviously, you know, renego- renegotiated the term and renegotiated the both the managed services and uh, content delivery uh, part of the deal and extended the contract until 2025. And that has obviously impacted our, uh, our margins. Um, we expect the, um, the margins to be Obviously, we're in line with the provided guidance, and then we expect growth in 2025 in line with our um, plans for increased deployment of content, increased deployment of aggregation platform and PAM in various different markets that are um, regulated in the United States and are going to be regulated in the United States and Canada and other uh, areas uh, in 2024 and further in 2025. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, and then you also highlighted um, that you um, uh, paid off 3.7 million euros of the uh, the convertible debt. Um, do you expect to continue doing that in 24? And do you have an estimate of when you expect to have it paid off completely? Ronan, can you take that, please? Yeah, sure. Good morning, Neil. How are you doing? Uh, so yeah, so in 2023 we paid six million dollars, four in cash, two in convertible, in, in converting into shares. Uh, we expect to continue exercising the right to pay down the existing convertible, subject to ongoing management discussions and cash flow needs. We're investing in the business, and we're doing this decision literally on a monthly basis. But we have five more installments. We are spending $2.5 million. And to get management together with the board, trying to make the right decision on the use of cash, of repaying or converting into debt. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe the final one from me here. Um, you did comment a little bit in your prepared remarks with respect to the strategic review, but just wanted to see if there's any other additional insight that you can share as sort of sort, sort of provoke the timing of, of announcing the strategic review. Did you get a specific inbound, or is there anything worth noting on on you know the timing of uh, the formation of the special uh, committee? The strategic review is basically a result of an increased m and activity across the uh, the space. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, recent increased interest in Bragg, um, the board decided that uh, it's time to form a special committee that is going to um, consider and explore any strategic alternatives for the company. All right. Thanks very much. I'll pass the line. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Atir Kadve with 8 Capital. Your line is open. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my questions. <clears throat> I wanted to ask on <clears throat> the cadence of the proprietary games this year, uh, proprietary and exclusive games this year. You said 29 uh, potential games coming out uh, this year, similar to last year. Maybe for the ones you had released last year, are there any learnings uh, that you can apply to your newer launches? And are there any games that are really kind of uh, outperforming your expectations? Uh, I guess what I'm asking is, is there the potential for, for being another Egyptian magic or dragon power in this? Yeah, thank you for your question. So we're definitely seeing potentially in our games uh, being deployed uh, in both American and European markets. And we're obviously hoping that we're going to get the next Egyptian magic um, deployed from our portfolio in that's going to be launched in 2024. But I guess it's going to depend, the success of these games depend more on successful placement and promotion of these games and uh, sort of post-sales activities that are in place with certain clients. I think that it's also going to be very important to uh, launch custom and exclusive games with selected operators in both markets, and that is going to uh, that is going to define the, the success of our content in 2024 and further in 2025. 
Okay, excellent. And then there's something uh, in the press release just on the Netherlands market. You mentioned heightened competition. How should we be thinking about your strategy in that market? Will you continue to try to defend your share? Will you try to take more share? Or how should we be thinking about the Netherlands market in 2024? Um, the Dutch market has been very important for us uh, in the past two years, and uh, we're growing in this market. Um, obviously, we want to diversify away uh, from it at the same time. And we are seeing op- both opportunities uh, in the market and, and same regulatory, same time regulatory risks. Obviously, there have been new restrictions that have been put in place uh, just recently. Um, we see major opportunities in implementation of our Fuse platform with selected customers. We see opportunities in growing our share of wallet with selected PAM and aggregation clients. And all in all, the Dutch market is going to remain very high on the priority list for 2024 and 2025. Okay, great. And then I'll ask one more question and I'll pass the line. Just on the Brazil market, some movement there in terms of regulatory approval, and that could be a significant market, the biggest in Latin America. You know, what are your expectations for that market? What investments will you have to make to really, um, you know, seize that opportunity? Yeah, great question. So the Brazilian market is already huge. Um, We won't be – making any further investment into investments into that market other than integrations with selected operators. We're integrated with the biggest operators in the market already, and all we have to do is execute against our strategy to deploy, place, and promote content with those operators and deliver custom and exclusive games with those operators and fight for the share of wallet with these operators. We obviously have a great product, uh, we are one of the leading aggregators in the market. Um, obviously, that is going to be something that is going to be in high demand in Brazil as well. And uh, that is going to allow us to use as a leverage to deploy our proprietary and third-party exclusive games in the most efficient manner and win a share in the market that is going to satisfy our expectations. Excellent. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I'll pass the line. Your next question comes from the line of David McFadgen with Cormark Securities. Your line is open. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, thank you. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, so you said you launched a super bad in Brazil. Are you providing uh, sports betting and online casino content? Maybe you could just uh, give us a few more details there. No, we're not. We're providing aggregation uh, services as a platform, and we're providing Fuse as a platform, and obviously providing delivery of third-party content and providing third-party exclusive content and proprietary content to operators that are active in the market. Okay. Um, And then, you know, you talked about the fact that you would be – Live and two other Canadian markets in 2024. Are you, are you, do you plan to service them? Well, one, can you tell us what problem it is? Two, um, do you plan to be servicing other operators that are servicing those provinces on a gray market basis, or are you actually working with the provincial lottery corp and servicing them? We are planning to go live with operators that are regulated, uh, in markets in these regional markets in, in Canada. We do not plan to service uh, operators that are providing their services through offshore licenses. Okay. Can you tell can you tell us what promises you expect to be live in outside of Ontario? Can't comment on which promises that those are going to be. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Jordan Bender with JMP Securities. Your line is open. Hi, this is Eric Ross on for Jordan. Thanks for taking our questions. So first, if the debt pay down will end in the next quarter and outside the strategic review, if we're be sitting here a year from now and the macro environment was in a similar or the same place, what would you see as the best uses of free cash flow? 
Ronan, you want to take this question? Yeah, sure. Uh, good morning. So, um, from from our perspective, currently uh, we utilize the cash. I think in the most effective way. We took the loan in the Lean Partners loan in 2022 uh, in September. We repaid over six million. We are standing another 2.5 million during uh, during 2020 during the next couple of five months. The best use of the cash for us is investing in our product, investments in our technology, accelerate markets that we want to be put in, deploy our content in the right speed to invest heavily in, um, in, in enhancing our PAM to get into new customers, especially on the Czech Republic market, uh, Canadian market, etc. That's the best use of our cash. So mainly investment, mainly accelerating investment in particular product that we want to uh, put our foot on and to accelerate our product mix. As Matt said before, a proprietary content is one of the key. The PAM customers it's, uh, and the PAM platform is the key. Fuse is the key, so we're investing heavily on that. That's our roadmap for 2024, and um, that literally answers the question what's going to be the best use of our cash. Okay, great. And within the guidance, can you talk about what you expect for growth in third-party games versus proprietary? Thank you. Much would you want to take it? Do you want me to take? No, no, just go ahead. So we're expecting the growth of both of those particular product mix. As as Matt indicated, a key strategic uh, item in our roadmap is is deploying our proprietary content. We see the traction. We see that how that is growing in the European market and also growing on the U.S. market. We're live now with the majority of the operators in the U.S. market, and we can see this traction month after month. We also have a very good partnership with uh, with uh, exclusive content providers, Matt said, Blueberry uh, and Gamomat, which is a long-standing um, supplier. And we believe there's going to be quite much more acceleration, especially when we are deploying a new market like Brazil, that market like we're enhancing in the Swiss market, Latin market, Italian market, and of course in the Spanish market. So we expect that to grow. I would say everyone has a different starting point. If you look at the product mix slide, I think the eight, the slide number eight in the presentation, there's a different way to each one of them. We're pro, we are happy with the progress of proprietary. I believe that's going to be a very instrument, instrumental year 2024 for us. But both of them have also different type of product mix and, and costs associated to. But the combination of the two and the ability to deploy our aggregation platform and the fuse platform will be able to allow us to increase both of them slightly in a different growth rate. One is coming from a high base, one is coming from a low base. But um, that's roughly what we expect in 2024. If I may just add to that, so the the growth of the third party uh, content revenue uh, depends largely on our ability to integrate and our ability to uh, launch with uh, these large operators going into these newly regulated markets where we are usually one of the two or one of the three aggregation platforms for these operators. And then it depends on the growth of these operators uh, in this market. The growth of the proprietary content largely depends on our uh, on our de- deployment into existing operators in Europe and United States and successful placement and promotion of these games within these operators. It also it also depends on um, to a certain extent how fast some of the U.S. and 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 uh, other jurisdictions are going to uh, regulate iGaming in the future. And then obviously we're going to be using our aggregation and fuse uh, positions with these operators to aggressively place and promote our content with the use of tools such as tournament jackpots, recommendation engines, uh, leaderboards, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, it is star one. Your next question comes from the line of Jack Van Der Arde with Maxim Group. Your line is open. Okay, great. Good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my questions. 
Um, so similar to, to what others have asked, but just looking at the 2023 revenue growth, it was up over 10%. Uh, and your 2024 guidance at the midpoint implies, you know, 13% growth. Um, that's an acceleration. Uh, you've already outlined a list of growth developments to exha- exhaustion, but um, what would you just attribute? Is there anything in particular that's like the key driver of that actual growth acceleration, or is it is it more due to maybe a slower back half of the year? Thanks. So the key driver for acceleration is going to be, like I said, deployment of a proprietary and third-party exclusive content within the uh, existing uh, B2C operators and successful deployment of aggregation and fuse platforms with clients, international operators or local operators in some of the newly regulated markets. There are also obviously PAM opportunities that we have in the pipeline and the acceleration is going to depend on successful launches of these operators um, that are going to obviously launch PAM, aggregation, fuse, and proprietary and third-party platform. So the acceleration is going to depend on their success as well. Okay, that, that's helpful. And maybe just one more. You added more supplier licenses in 2023, regulators and Sweden, Gibraltar, and Isle of Man most recently. Can you just speak to the importance of these new licenses in general and how they factor into your 2024 outlook? And are you actively pursuing additional licenses as we speak? Thanks. So these licenses are going to allow us to effectively distribute third-party content into B2C operators that are licensed in these jurisdictions and are operating in the international environment. And we are going to continue to pursue um, any B2B licenses in any of the regulations that are, or any of the jurisdictions that are going to regulate in 2024 and 2025. We have recently been approved in Peru. And if any, if we're going to see any jurisdiction regulate iGaming or sports betting, we're going to be applying for the license and following the, the, the growth of our B2C partners in those jurisdictions, either through deployment of our PAM, deployment of our aggregation, or deployment of third-party uh, and uh, third-party exclusive and proprietary content. Okay, great. Thanks for taking my questions. There are no further questions at this time. I will turn the call to Yaniv for closing remarks. Yes, thank you everyone uh, for joining the call this morning. We had another very successful year, and before we sign off, I want to thank all the bloggers who made this possible. Without all the people who work really hard throughout the year, we wouldn't have been here. So thank you all for your hard work, and we look forward to hosting everybody on our next call, our Q1 2024. Have a great morning, everybody. This concludes today's conference call. We thank you for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.